Hello and welcome. On behalf of the National Atmospheric Deposition Program, I'd like to thank you for joining us today as we walk you through this NADP training video highlighting the NTN sample changeout using the ACM bucket type collector. NADP protocol states that the procedures in this video should be performed at your site every Tuesday morning. However, safety is always our first priority, and therefore it is up to the site operator and site supervisor to establish appropriate safety protocols. Keep in mind that any sample left in the field a duration greater than 194 hours, which is 8 days and 2 hours, will be considered invalid. We ask site operators to be aware that during adverse weather conditions, it is not recommended to bring the NADP NTN field form, or FORF, with you to your site. Alternatively, please record all necessary information in a journal or logbook. You can then transfer this information once you return to the lab. We will begin by retrieving the deployed sample bucket from the field. The operator will approach the site from the downwind side, that is the side facing the wind. This is done to reduce potential sample contamination. If snow or ice is present on the collector lid, please brush it off before proceeding. In order to avoid excessive sample contamination, we suggest keeping a bagged, used NADP bucket lid to remove significant accumulation. At this time, record information for use in Block 10, the Remarks section of your field form. Note any abnormal or unusual site conditions. These can include site weather during sample changeout, equipment malfunctions, potential sources of sample contamination, and so on. The operator should come to the site prepared with a clean NADP bucket and lid, chem wipes or plain paper towels, and gloves, and distilled or deionized water for cleaning purposes. Open and unpack the supplies from your NADP carrier, which should include a new sealed NADP bucket and lid, among other supplies needed for a successful sample changeout at your site. We now need to verify that the sensor is operating properly and heating. To do this, Place your finger along the sensor grid, as shown here. If the ambient temperature is less than 40 degrees Fahrenheit, 4 degrees Celsius, the grid should be heating and feel warm to the touch. Once you have checked the sensor, you can activate the collector by placing several drops of water or a small amount of snow on the sensor grid. This should then activate the collector, allowing it to remain open for several minutes while you complete the sample changeout. When the collector has opened, you will need to inspect the contents of the bucket for contamination, as demonstrated here. While inspecting the contents of the bucket, do not touch the bucket or directly lean over the bucket. Doing so may lead to sample contamination from human hair, sweat, or even clothing fibers. Record any contamination you observe in the bucket. This information is needed to complete Block 5 of your field form. When completing Block 5, remember to check all available boxes in either the Yes or No columns. Any additional comments should be written in Block 10, Remarks. To remove the old bucket, first locate and unzip the cleaned and sealed lid. Grasp the lid bag from the side opposite of the zipper. Now carefully pull the bag back over your hand and wrist until the lid is fully exposed and the seal side is facing downward. This will allow you to use the bag as a glove when placing the lid on the bucket. Securely and firmly place the lid over the open bucket using your bagged hand. Be sure not to touch the lip of the bucket or the underside of the lid with bare hands. Doing so may lead to sample contamination. Once the lid is in place, go ahead and lift the sealed bucket from the holder. Next, place the bucket on a clean surface. Keeping in mind that dirt and dust are difficult to remove from the bucket during the cleaning process. Use the bag and your hands to press down on the lid and ensure it is firmly sealed onto the bucket. Once your sample is secure, write down information needed to complete Block 3, Field Bucket, on the field form from the previous week. Include the off date and time for the sample bucket that you just collected. Note that time is expressed using a 24-hour clock. Once you've recorded the off time and secured the old sample, it is time to clean the collector before deploying a new sample. Gather your cleaning supplies consisting of chem wipes or plain paper towels. Non-print or color towels must be used, along with the ionized or distilled water. Be sure the new bucket remains sealed in the bag until the cleaning process is complete. Begin by moistening a wipe or towel with the deionized or distilled water. Before wiping down the collector, it is recommended that you blow any remaining water off of the sensor grid 
or add water to the grid in order to activate the collector. However, this time stop the collector when it is about halfway open. This will allow you to thoroughly clean the collector arms, as well as the underside of the lid seal. Be sure to note the condition of the lid seal pad and record any problems for block 10 remarks. Once this is complete, allow the collector to continue its cycle. Additionally, you will also need to wipe down the entire collector, paying special attention to the collector tabletop, the tops and sides of the collector lid and body, and the lid arms, as demonstrated here. While cleaning, if you notice that a replacement lid seal or other supplies are needed, call the cow and make a note on your field form in Block 9, Supplies. Lastly, don't forget to remove any remaining debris or spider webs from the sensor and sensor grid. Once cleaning is complete, verify correct operations of the equipment, including the rain gauge, motor box, and optical sensor. Be sure to check the connections and inspect the equipment. If you notice any issues, report them in Block 10, Remarks, on the field form, and if necessary, contact the cow. Once this is done, record any additional information needed to complete Block 4, Site Operations, on the 4th. In this block, you'll need to check either the Yes, No, or Unsure column for each of the first three items. Item 1 asks you to verify that the collector sensor and motor box operate properly and that the lid is in the correct position. This should have been determined when you first activated the collector to retrieve the sample. If no precipitation was occurring, the collector lid should have been covering the dry side bucket upon arrival at the site. Item 2 asks you to verify that the rain gauge operated properly during the week. This can be determined by referring to either your Belford or electronic rain gauge chart. Item 3 asks you to verify if the collector opened and closed at least once during the sampling period other than for testing purposes. Again, refer to either your Belford or electronic rain gauge chart for information on the frequency and duration of collector openings. If you need additional assistance, please contact the CAL. Finally, don't forget to indicate in item 4 whether or not your rain gauge was in winter operation mode during the sampling period. Once the old sample bucket has been removed and the equipment cleaned and checked, you are ready to deploy the new sample bucket. Before you begin, Record the necessary information needed to complete blocks 1 and 2 on your fourth for the current week sample. These are site and observer, respectively. This includes writing down the name of your site and your site ID, along with your name and initials. An example is shown here. You are now ready to deploy your new sample bucket. With your collector open, this means the wet side bucket holder is exposed. Carefully remove the new NADP bucket from the carrier and hold the bucket by the handle. First, remove the twist tie holding the bag closed. Once again, pull the bucket bag back over your arm and wrist so it acts as a glove. Before installation, don't forget to turn the bucket upside down and shake it to ensure no residual water remains in the bucket from the cleaning process. Now place the bucket on the collector so that its handle is facing the front of the collector as demonstrated. Fasten the tie down spring if present and ensure that the bucket fits firmly into the bucket holder. Once the new bucket is correctly installed on the collector, blow the remaining water off the sensor to close the collector. As the collector is closing, ensure that the lid seal fits snugly over the wet side bucket. If you are changing or have removed the dry side bucket for cleaning purposes, you can replace it at this time. Additionally, don't forget to thoroughly clean the rim of the dry side bucket. Record the date and time that the sample bucket was placed on the collector for Block 3, Field Bucket, on the 4th for the current week. Once you have confirmed the collector is operating and securely closed, you will need to place the sealed bucket containing last week's sample carefully into the plastic bag that the new bucket came from. Seal this bag using the twist tie and confirm once more that the lid seal is tightly sealed onto the bucket. Using a Sharpie or marker, it is recommended to mark the bag with the date and time on and off of the sample, as well as any contamination contained within the sample. This will help to avoid future confusion once the sample is brought back to the lab. 
Finally, before leaving the site, verify once more that the collector lid is firmly sealed. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to call the CAL at 1-800-952-7353 or send us an email, ntn at isws.illinois.edu.